Hi. Okay, gravimetric stoichiometry. This is using uh, mole ratios from balanced chemical equations on moles. However, we're given grams as a starting place, and we want to finish with grams. So we're going from mass to moles, converting to moles of another substance, and then to grams of another substance. This is a typical style chemistry question. So it's the process for calculating the mass of reactants or products. It's very useful in any type of manufacturing processes from making cars to baking cakes. It is important to know how much raw material is needed to make a specific amount of product. You will use this math many times in this and future chemistry classes. First thing, you have to have a balanced chemical equation. Then, what I want you to do is put the amounts that you know underneath that species in the equation, including the molar mass. Then, step three, you're going to convert to moles for anything you have um, mass and molar mass for. You're going to use the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation to predict the amount of moles for the desired substance. And then you will convert the predicted amount of moles into mass. So you start with mass, convert to moles, convert to moles of another substance, convert to mass of another substance. Mole ratio only works on moles. That's why it's called a mole ratio. So this is a flow chart showing you this information. So you're given the mass of substance A. So you use this formula. Moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass to calculate the moles of substance A. Then using your mole ratio, here's your mole ratio, uh, you can convert from substance A to substance B. Once you have the moles of substance B, now you can rearrange the equation to solve for mass of B, and then that's your answer. And um, A and B could be reactants or products. The question will tell you what you're looking for. So let's do an example. Carbon dioxide produced by astronauts can be removed with lithium hydroxide. The reaction produces lithium carbonate and water. An astronaut produces an average of 1 times 10 to the 3 grams, or a kilogram, of carbon dioxide per day. What mass of lithium hydroxide should engineers put on board a spacecraft per astronaut per day? Now this is pretty important. Um, you have to be correct on this because there's no 7-Eleven up there for the space station to go to in order to get some lithium hydroxide. So when you send your astronauts up, you need to make sure that they have everything they need. So I've calculated the molar mass of uh, carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams per mole, and the molar mass of lithium hydroxide. So what do we know? We know we have 1.00 times 10 to the 3 grams. So this is our mass, right? That's the little m. What we want to find is the mass of lithium hydroxide. What we do know is our molar masses. And a question might not give you the molar mass, but you can always find it if you know the chemical name or the chemical formula for your substance. So don't think you know nothing in a question just because they didn't give you any numbers. Alright, so we need to calculate moles of carbon dioxide because this is the substance that we can, that we actually have enough information to do that for. 
So moles of CO2 is the mass of CO2 divided by the molar mass of CO2. So this is 1 times 10 to the 3 grams divided by 44.01 grams per mole. Now, if you were going to round this answer off, you would have three significant digits for 1.00. However, this is not your final answer, so don't round it off. Carry at least one, usually two, extra sig figs. You don't have to carry everything. So this is going to be 22.722 moles. So almost 23 moles of carbon dioxide per day. Now, if I put CO2 in there, now what I want to do is I want to multiply this by the mole ratio so that I get the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. I want to get rid of moles of CO2. So CO2 in the mole ratio is going to go on the bottom and lithium hydroxide is going on the top. So let's look at that chemical equation. Is it balanced? It's not. So we have to make sure it's balanced before we start, otherwise we're going to have the wrong mole ratio. So if we put it 2 in front of the lithium hydroxide, now it's balanced. So we've got 2 lithium hydroxides over 1 carbon dioxide. So the 2 and the 1 came from these coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So this gives us 45.44 moles of lithium hydroxide because the CO2 cancelled. Okay, so we've got this number of moles of lithium hydroxide. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate the mass of lithium hydroxide. So we've gone from mass to moles to moles and now we're going to mass. So this part in blue. Mass of lithium hydroxide is going to be equal to the moles times the molar mass. So 45.444 moles times 23.95 grams per mole. So moles cancel, we're left with grams. So 1,088.39 grams. Now, that's how much lithium hydroxide per day. So let's round that off. We can only have three significant digits. So 1,090 grams of lithium hydroxide per day. And there's your final answer. So for each astronaut, each day we will need just over a kilogram of lithium hydroxide. So the engineers must put 1,090 grams per astronaut per day to use up all of the CO2 they produce. Okay, let's do another example. Sometimes we don't, we're not actually asked for the mass for our um, answer. Sometimes you're asked for the number of molecules instead, but you still need to find moles first. So this is an, an example of when we would have to use Avogadro's number. So passing chlorine gas through molten sulfur produces liquid disulfur dichloride. How many molecules, 
So that's big N. How many molecules of chloride, or let's just say chlorine, react to produce 50 grams of disulfur dichloride? So how, mon how many molecules of chlorine react to produce 50 Point zero grams of disulfur dichloride. Uh, the molar mass of this is 35.02 grams per mole. So in this question, we're starting with our product and working backwards to a reactant. So you can go from reactant to reactant, reactant to product, product to reactant, product to product. Okay, so we can calculate the moles because we have mass and molar mass, um, but we don't know anything else right now about chlorine, or do we? We can easily find a molar mass, but we don't need to find mass. What we do know is we know Avogadro's number, and that is... 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, because it's Cl2, per mole. So let's figure out our moles first. So moles S2Cl2 is mass divided by molar mass, so 50 grams divided by 135.02 grams per mole. So this is 0 0.370316 moles of S2Cl2. Uh, we've got three sig figs in the math, five, sorry, in the mass, uh, five in the molar mass, so I'm going to carry at least four significant digits here. Um, so we've got moles of disulfur dichloride, so now we need to convert this to moles of chlorine. So we use the mole ratio. We want S2Cl2 to go on the bottom. We want Cl2 to go on the top. That way S2Cl2 cancels. So what you want goes on top, what you don't want, what you want to get rid of goes on the bottom. So the numbers are one to one. So we can cancel. Now, you have to show this step. You can't just say, oh, I can look at that and see it's one to one, so therefore it's 0 0.37, whatever. You can't do that. You have to show your work. So we have 0 0.370316 moles of chlorine. Now, we've got moles of chlorine. We can find the number of particles. So moles times the molar mass, 0 0.370316 times... Avogadro's number molecules of Cl2 per one mole. So moles cancel and we're left with molecules. So 2.23 times 10 to the 23 molecules of chlorine. So there's your answer. We need 2.23 times 10 to the 23 molecules of chlorine to produce 50 grams of disulfur dichloride. So finish this off with a nice statement. So 2.23 times 10 to the 23 molecules of chlorine are needed to react to produce 50 grams of disulfur dichloride. So, 
This is how you calculate uh, using gravimetric stoichiometry. We go, usually, we go from grams to moles to moles to grams. In this case, we go to molecules as well. So, balanced chemical equation, calculate moles. First two steps. You got this.